And now I have a message for all of our listeners. How many of you know... Oh, my gosh. Hey, what's the matter, Wynn? Hey, Skinny, something's wrong. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Skinny Ennis and his band will now play Jingle hey, Jack... Take, take it easy, Wynn. Slow down there. Tell me what's wrong. Say, Skinny, uh, what's a tube of Pepsodent? Oh, you know, when that's the thing that's built like me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but uh, it's a tooth, toothpaste, isn't it? Here's a script that was handed to me, and it talks about a, a toothbrush. Well, shucks, when didn't you ever hear about Pepsi and toothbrush? Didn't you know we sell toothbrushes, too? Gosh, no. Gee, that Pepsodent company doesn't miss a bet, does it? I mean, not when it comes to making teeth brighter and better looking. Gosh, I didn't know about the Pepsodent toothbrush. But here it says the 50 Tough Toothbrush is now a better toothbrush. Better because it has improved Fibrex, DuPont's newest and finest synthetic bristle. These new bristles are sturdier, heavier than before, and that means they'll last longer. But strong as they are, they're still gentle, kind to tender gums, and they feel good to your mouth the first time you use them. And did you know this new Pepsodent 50 Tough Toothbrush carries the Good Housekeeping magazine seal of approval? Well, it does, and that means you can buy it with complete confidence. So tonight, folks, Go out and get a new Pepsodent 50 Tough Toothbrush. Hmm. Gee, isn't it funny I didn't know about that toothbrush? I thought we were only selling toothpaste and tooth powders. Once again, we want you to meet the Navy. Representing the servicemen here tonight at the Hollywood Canteen is... Yeoman Wilbur Johnson reporting, sir. That's fine. Hiya, Wilbur. Say, you just said you were a yeoman. What does that mean, a yeoman? Oh, it's about the same as a private in the Army, only their pants, they can bend over. <laughs> Your pants do hug you, don't they, huh? Hug me, Bob. When I bend over, the stitches in the seam start singing my devotion. <laughs> <laughs> it sure ain't like those civilian clothes I used to wear back in Arkansas. Uh, yeah, you Arkansas, really? Well, say, now that you're out here, what do you think of the girls in California? Oh, I don't pay attention to them. I'm married. I got a wife in Little Rock. Really? Well, this is the first time I've ever seen a sailor with a ship in the Pacific and an anchor in Arkansas. <laughs> well, uh, how long you been married, Wilbur? I got married a year ago. I suppose it was a whirlwind courtship. No, Bob. I went with my wife 12 years before I married her. 12 years? Say, what department are you in in the Navy? Reconnaissance? <laughs> nope. Intelligence. It's... <laughs> Just wait for my last before you throw your slingshot in there, old boy. Do you understand? <laughs> say... <laughs> Don't say what last or I'll fall over. Say, Wilbur, I hear you're a pretty good golfer. Well, I certainly like the game, Bob. I understand you play a lot with Bing Crosby. Not anymore. Boy, would you play with a guy who waits till nobody's looking and picks his ball up and throws it toward the hole? Of course not. Neither will Crosby. <laughs> That's you. Cut in. Right there. You know, Bob, being at the Hollywood canteen like this, I wanted to meet a movie star. A movie star? Well, you're lucky you ran into me. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Know any? No. <laughs> Do I know any? Listen, just sit down here at this table and you'll be surprised who you'll meet. Oh, yeah, Mr. Hope! Oh, hello! Hello, sailor boy! I understand you wanted to meet some of the other people on the show, and here I am. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Colonna. <laughs> well, the idea of saying I look like Mr. Colonna, I won't stand for it. And neither will I! <laughs> You don't understand. I'm Vera Bang. Pleased to meet you. What outfit you with? <laughs> Mr. Hope, what's the name of this handsome hunk? <laughs> Why, Miss Vague, this is Will Johnson, yeoman, third class. Oh, listen, brother, he's a man. As far as I'm concerned, that makes him first class. <laughs> <laughs> a sailor, I think I could go for you. You could? Oh, yes, I like tall, dark men. I'm blonde. Oh, then why, who cares? Kiss me. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't. You're old enough to be my mother. Oh. Oh. Uh, you know, Mr. Oh. Hope, I'd poke you right in the mouth if you weren't old enough to be my father. <laughs> well, tell me, Miss Vague, how are you getting along with the servicemen here at the canteen? Oh, they're wild about me. Simply wild about me. Imagine, I just stole a soldier right from under Hedy Lamar's nose. <laughs> That's impossible. Oh, is that so, that Hedy Lamar? I'm just as pretty and young and attractive as she is. 
I noticed right after I laid her out with a baseball bat. <laughs> Gee, I'd like to meet that Harry Lamar. Well, you know, Wilbur, all the big movie stars wait on the tables here at the canteen. I wonder who we'll get. Boy, last night, Lana Turner waited on me. She came over to the table and kissed me. The night before that, Carol Landis waited on me and kissed me. Well, here goes. Waiter! Mustache tickles, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, so you're the waiter. Do we have to pay for our meal, Kelowna? No, we serve all soldiers free. What about me? Veterans of the last war serve free, too. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to get into your mustache with an egg beater. <laughs> now, look, waiter, what's wrong with this chicken soup? There's more water in it than chicken. Ah, yes. Hen was crying. Chicks got drafted. <laughs> Furthermore, Kelowna, I have another complaint to make. This steak is as tough as shoe leather. Now, that's ridiculous. Halt, that steak is not as tough as shoe leather. It's soft and tender and... Well, maybe it is as tough as shoe leather. Kelowna, how come you suddenly changed your mind and agreed with me? Well, I just looked down and I'm barefoot. <laughs> Now, uh, what do you have? Oh, uh, Professor, I don't know what to order. What would you suggest to keep my figure trim? Meat cleaver. <laughs> well, I'll go back in the kitchen and get your order. All right, and hurry it up, Cologne. Oh, look, Wilbur, here comes Skinny Ennis. Hiya, Skin. Hello, Bob. Skinny, I want you to meet Wilbur Johnson, yeoman, third class. Wilbur, this is Skinny Ennis, human, fourth class. <laughs> Hiya, Hiya, Muscles. muscles. <laughs> Boy, you should see these two guys standing side by side, folks. They look like a couple of strands of spaghetti in search of a meatball. <laughs> well, shake hands, Bob. We found one. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what's keeping Kelowna with our food. Hey, Kelowna! Be with you in a second, Hope. Having a tough time putting these panties on the lamp chops. How come? Won't fit over the girdles. Kelowna, you'll drive me to distraction. Okay, but no faster than 35 miles an hour. <laughs> well, Kelowna, can you just bring me a glass of milk? Milk? Easiest thing in the world. I have a cow out here, and I'll milk it. Only it's cold out here, so I'll put on my woolen mittens. Kelowna, don't milk her with those fuzzy woolen mittens. Why not? She doesn't mind. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Care for a milkshake? <laughs> Say, hey, guess we may as well forget about Kelowna for a while. Oh, here comes Francis Langford. Hello, Francis. Hello, everybody. Hello, sailor. Hello. Gee, you're beautiful, Miss Langford. Your eyes are like those of Hero, for whom Leander swam the hell's pond. Your smile is a smile of Cleopatra that made Mark Antony her slave. <laughs> well, what do you know? An intellectual wolf. <laughs> Well, look, now that we're all here at the table, Skinny, Wilbur, Vera, Francis, and me, let's have some fun. Gee, Skinny doesn't look as though he's having a good time, Bob. Oh, Skinny never has a good time at these dinners, Francis. Why not? Well, the pimentos and the olives keep looking at him and saying, he's out there, why are we in here? <laughs> oh, the music's starting. Good, let's dance. Who wants to dance this dance with me? I do. Who wants to dance this dance with me? I do. Who wants to dance this dance with me? I do. And don't think she can't do it either. <laughs> Say, you know, I don't think Cologne will ever get... I'll get it. Hello? This is Long Distance, Denver, Colorado, calling Bob Hope. Oh, this is Bob Hope speaking. I'll put your party on. Go ahead, please. Hello, Hope. Yes, Kelowna? Which one of you ordered that Denver sandwich? <laughs> Why, Kelowna, you wouldn't be so stupid as to go to Denver for a Denver sandwich. Why, of course not. That would be silly. Well, where are you? In Bermuda, getting the onions. <laughs> All thanks for the memory, Miss Betty Davis, queen of Hollywood's canteen. Each soldier saying flying man and leatherneck marine. To thank you so much. And thanks for the memory, you folks who never shirk to make this project work. For every dime and might of time you've lent to make it perk. We thank you so much. Well, we've all had a great time tonight broadcasting here from the Hollywood Canteen. And really, it's great seeing these boys of the service enjoying a little of the fun they deserve. Next week, we'll be back at the same time broadcasting for the boys down at Camp Elliott in San Diego. Good night, everybody, and greetings to the boys at the Harbinger Aerial Gunner School down there in the lower Rio Grande Valley. Listening tonight over KRGV. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Go
broadcast came to you from the Hollywood Canteen in Hollywood, California. This is Wendell Niles speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company.